Irish tea, how are ye? Welcome back to the Candlelit Tales podcast. We tell Irish myths and we chat about them afterwards. My name is Surika and I'm one half of the storytelling sibling duo. And I'm here to tell you about this series, the collaboration series, where we've linked in with some musicians we love and they are putting music to the stories that we love. This is an episode where Aaron is going to tell the story of the intoxication of the Ulster men, which is a mad riot of a story of a night out drinking that goes wrong and then goes wronger and then goes really sideways and then gets back on track with music from the wonderful, multi-talented Fancy Dan. You can find Fancy Dan's links in the show notes if you want to hear more of his magical music. And this podcast is proudly supported by those of you who've chosen to contribute on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. And if you feel you're in a position to offer something for these podcasts, you can chip in too at patreon.com forward slash candlelittales or you can like, or you can comment, or you can share, or you can just enjoy. And for now, Aaron, tell us the story. The Intoxication of the Ulstra Men for the collaboration series with Fancy Dan. One year in Ulster, coming up to Sown in the celebrations of the dark half of the year, the Celtic New Year. Grohor Magnassa was in Owen Mac, and he was greeted by Cú Cullen coming into the Great Hall to invite him to a feast in Dundalgan, his nephew and one of his foster sons. One of the greatest warriors of Ulster, of course he'd have to accept an invitation from one of the best warriors in Ulster. But then, Fintan of Dundabain arrived in just then as well. Fintan was also one of Grohor's foster sons and he was also inviting him to a feast, a New Year's celebration, one of which Grohor would have to accept. This was not something he could really reject. And so looking at Fintan and looking at Kukul and his two foster sons, he decided to say yes to both. Senka, his wise advisory, told him that perhaps he couldn't be in two places at once. Perhaps, in fact, on this night, seeing as it was the Celtic New Year and so in that time in between two years and two things he could maybe do just that. There was maybe a way, he said, to keep both parties happy. And so he sent Fintan off with his acceptance to Dundabain and to Cucullan, he said the same. And both men went to their separate places to make ready for a great celebration and a great feast to entertain their king and the rest of the great well, Fintan went to Dune de Ben and he put on an excellent display. A hundred vats of every drink was there. All the choices of meats and great sleeping places for all the heroes, their ladies, their poets, their musicians, their hunters. Everyone in Ulster would have a place in Dune de Ben. And when they arrived there and then, they saw such a display of hospitality. They had never seen the like of it before. Cullen was wondering if Emo was decking the halls in Dundalgan with just as much elaborate display as it was on the halls, walls that he could see here in Dunedin. But he decided not to worry about it. After all, Grohor had promised that at the middle of the night, when the moon was up in the sky, just around the middle of the night, they would head from Dunedin. So Cullen said to Leg to stand outside the feasting hall and to wait and watch until the moon was in the middle of the sky and then they would get themselves going on their chariots and ride down to Dundalgan to show off a much better feast and festivities for the night. Now, Leg wasn't overly delighted with this because he had to stay outside and not go inside the hall and drink, could be merry, eat the delicious meats that he could smell wafting over the tables, have a drink of all of the elaborate hundred vats of drinks that were coming from all over the world, and so instead he sat outside with a bottle of his preferred drink. And he sat watching the stars, wondering when it would be that they would get themselves going. Well, all the music and all of the stories and all of the fun was flowing from the feast inside the halls as the crave Rua and the women and the men were having such a great time until then, Leg said, that's it, this is time for us to go. He had polished off the bottle of whatever he was drinking at that time and he peered in and he told the men to gather themselves up and it was time to get down to Dundalgan. 
while Cucullin leapt upon his chariot with the grey of Macca and the black of Shangleen bristling there in the moonlight. And he told Leg to whip them into a frenzy and get themselves going and to ask every one of the heroes of the Crave Rua to follow them if they had the daring. And so all of the Crave Rua, Crohor included, jumped up onto their chariots and made ready to get down to Dundalkin. Well, when they saw Cucullin setting the pace, they lifted their heads and careered after him. And suddenly, the sound of the horse's hooves was like thunder. The rolling of this massive army going on down from one feast to the other would send every herd of cattle stampeding in Ireland, would wake every baby in the land, would make every mother worry for fear of the craven and all of them then were trampling through the forest. They were stampeding over the forests and through the trees. They were crashing and careering through the lakes, past the rivers that were running now the water away from the chariots that were splashing on through them. And they were going so fast through Ireland's lakes and rivers, hills and valleys, they were gouging out a great and mighty track. The mud was being kicked left and right. Trees were falling and birds were screaming with the crave roar making such an almighty clattering as they went through Ireland. Now Cucullin eventually held up his hand and they looked around themselves and wondered where exactly they were. Because Cucullin had, after all, drank quite a lot of the hundred drinks out of one hundred vats of various drinks from all over the place. And he wasn't exactly sober, even though he was very well able to take a drink. He looked around then and began to think. The men of the Crave Rua didn't recognise where they were and they asked him. He recognised the slant in the landscape, a particular slope, and then he realised they were near Taralukra in Munster. They'd overshot themselves a little bit by going to Dundalgan. Instead of going exactly to the east, they'd gone all the way down south to the wrong province. Now, Cullen said maybe they should make themselves all the way back up. Now, perhaps they should get themselves back to Dundalgan, Cullen was thinking, but Kelth Car with other car shouted that they should not leave Munster just like that. After leaving such a trail into Munster, it would look like they were being cowardly and running away from some form of fight if they just simply turned tail now and ran back into Ulster. The rest of the Crave Rua nodded in agreement. Wise words, Calcar and Tuttlecar had spoken, and so they were ready to plant themselves down, ready for something or other. They weren't quite sure what. But seeing as Tara Luka was close by, Cucullin spied that there was, in fact, lights on in the halls. Tara Luka was often empty. It wasn't empty this night. Kuroi Magdara, the Hound of Munster, was there entertaining guests from the West. Maeve and Aulil were even in his banquet hall this night celebrating a great feast for themselves. Two watchers were standing on the battlements of Taralukra, and they had been listening to the feast inside much as Leg had been up and doing the men earlier that night. And when they saw a huge host and heard them two coming careering down towards Aralukra. They spied a huge warrior with a forked beard and a crazed look in his eye. They looked at each other and said, That is Conan Kiarnock. And when they saw a man, bald, haired, broad shoulders with a brown cloak around him, they looked at each other and said, That was Kelkar Madhudrakar. And when they saw a youth with seven colours in his hair and a crimson cloak folded seven times with a gold brooch by his neck. They looked at each other and said, That's Coo Cullen. They ran into the hall to tell Cooroy Macdara and the rest of the assembly there that the Grave Rua, the greatest warriors and fighting faction of all Ireland, had landed in their province on this night and they were looking much like they were looking for trouble. Kuroi Macdara said, Don't worry. He had had a vision, another sight, a prophecy, if you like, that these men would arrive here this night. And he had made preparations. Although all you and 
Maeve were ready to belt and run away, they were reassured that this day they would have a great thing to celebrate. And so Kurai Magdara walked out of the walls of Tara Lucra and saw the Crave Rua around him. He invited them in to a feasting hall, saying no weapons would be used this night. Instead, with the moon full and bright, they would celebrate. They would feast. This sounded like music to the ears of the men of the Crave Rua, and then they entered into the hall. Kura and Dara opened wide for them to look inside, and they saw brilliant cuts of choice meats displayed on the table, fine tapestries in the walls, and a hundred types of different drinks in a hundred types of different vessels. They thought they might as well sample them. And so as they went around this great feasting hall, they looked around and saw the door closed behind them. And no one else in there but the Crave Rua. They were well able to take care of themselves and entertain themselves and eat and drink as they liked. But it was strange that their hosts weren't there. And it was also a fact that Kura Mukhtara was an age-old enemy and they began to get a little bit worried. Now when the hall itself began to heat up and all of the walls began to burn to touch... Cullen realised that, that the wood that was surrounding these walls and the floor itself that was beginning to burn their feet was in fact a lair outside an iron core with the floor now heating up and the whole walls now burning all the men were going to get cooked and roasted alive they looked at him then with blame in their eyes with the burning smell and smoke beginning to be created with the bonfire underneath their hall. From outside the hall, Kuroi Mctara, Maeve and Oliel smiled in the twinkling night of Samhain. This feast surely turning to flames with enemies to burn and smoke. They didn't expect burst of flames licked the roof as from inside Coo Cullen emerged through a hole in the roof, salmon leaping his way around and landing on the ground. I shout and I heave, his hero light shining from his eyes, his anger and warp spasm taking control as he threw himself against the burning wreckage of the hall, pushing it over as all the men then tumbled out the hole he had created in the roof itself. Maeve, Oliel, Kuroi Magdara had scattered to the four winds. The rest of the Grey Rua, once they picked themselves up and dusted themselves off, all black and burnt, hot-headed and sooty covered, they looked around. Ku Cullen, who was already on his chariot, already with and the bristling black of Shangling and the grey of Maka ready to take them back to Dundalgan. His colour reminded them that there was still a feast to be had in his halls with Emer and the people of Martevna, with all of the choicest meats and a hundred drinks and a hundred vessels from all over the world. Claim it 